What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the all new Yamaha YZF R7. And the model that we're looking at today is finished off in Team Yamaha Blue and has an MSRP around $9,000. Powering the all-new Yamaha R7 is a 689cc liquid-cooled inline twin-cylinder engine. It is dual overhead cam with four valves per cylinder and has a 270-degree crankshaft for linear torque as well as limited vibration. It pumps out 74 horsepower with 51 pound-feet of torque and can achieve 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds depending on skill and it tops out at 143 miles per hour. The engine is paired to a six-speed sequential manual transmission with a multi-plate wet clutch. It is chain-driven and rear-wheel drive, and you can even opt for a quick shift system. And running on a 3.4-gallon fuel tank with a wet weight at 414 pounds, you can expect about 58 miles per gallon. The R7 also is going to feature a set of 41mm inverted front forks that have 5.1 inches of travel. They're adjustable for preload rebound as well as compression. And then for the rear, we get a linked type rear monocross shock with 5.1 inches of travel and it's adjustable for preload as well as rebound. This bike also features a set of hydraulic brakes with three discs all around. You get one in back measuring 245 millimeters and then twin discs up front measuring 298 millimeters. Looking at the dimensions of the R7, seat height is 32.9 inches, overall length is 81.5 while wheelbase is 54.9. Width is 27.8 and height is 45.7 inches and then minimum ground clearance is 5.3 inches. And then now moving on to the exterior styling with the new Yamaha R7. This is a very sharp bike, very similar lines that we saw on the last few years of the R6 and especially in the Team Yamaha Blue with all this satin black, this is a really sharp looking bike. You can see the plastic black along the mirrors protruding outwards from the upper portion then we have a large size clear windscreen. You can see all of that Yamaha racing blue for this entire front area. And I love the bifunctional LED headlight in the center with the DRLs on both sides. You can also see the intake ducts around the headlights and DRLs to provide more cooling to the motor. And it just really comes together super sleek. We get R7 written out on the front. And then you can see below that we have Yamaha written out on the front fender. Finished off in more of that satin black we get a blue wheel up front as well to really add some great contrast and then gray color for the forks as well as along the brake calipers. The wheels also measure 17 inches both front and back and as we move to the side profile once again this is a very sharp and sporty looking bike. We have R7 written on the side in a really nice graphic with the Yamaha blue as well as that lighter blue. We do have an aftermarket set of frame sliders and more of that satin black running through the entire fairing. We get a little bit more of the blue down below covering the exhaust system and of course we have that side exit. You can see part of the engine on the side with Yamaha written out and a really nice metallic gray all around the frame. Moving towards the gas tank it's finished off in more of the Yamaha blue. Has a pretty cool vent design up top with your Yamaha badge and you can see the aluminum fuel door on top. We get some carbon fiber to protect the tank a little bit and then really nice contours running down towards the seat. As we make our way in back, you can see how there's more of that gray color along the swing arm, blue on the rear rim as well. And then we get more of the gray for the passenger pegs. And I love in the sunlight, the satin black actually has a blue metallic flake. It really pops for the bike and certainly stands out. For the rear seat, we get more of the Yamaha blue surrounding it. A very thin seat right in the center, but you got a lot of cool contours and a pretty cool vent design with airflow going right through the seat. You can also see the LED taillight right in the center of the bike along with your turn signals on both sides of the license plate and then more aggressive lines in the back end. So there's a good look at the exterior with the all new Yamaha R7 along with all these specifications for the sport bike. It's going to be interesting to ride it to see how it actually performs. But with that said, we have Yamaha's key fob. Let's go ahead and fire it up and take a look at this digital gauge cluster. So then taking the key, inserting it into the ignition, we can turn it once to the right to turn on all the electronics. However, with the steering wheel turn all the way to the left, you can lock it by just pushing this all the way over. From here, we can turn the fuel on, you'll hear the system prime, and then we can just fire it up by pressing the button.
And then looking at the gauge cluster now, you can see a massive tack going across it, redlining towards 10,000 RPM. We have a gear indicator on the top left, your speedometer in the center, then fuel and time over on the right. You can also cycle through the screen using this control right here, going up and down. And you can see in the bottom, we have temperature that will come up along with MPG. Then you can continue over. You can see the trip odometer for two and one, and then back to the odometer on the bike as well as temperature. So not too much information on it, however, just enough. On the left side, we also have your high beam control, of course, your clutch lever. Underneath that, we have your turn signals as well as the horn. And then on the right side, we have the fuel system. You do get hazards on this bike that you can do. And you'll see them both turning on. We can turn that off. Of course, your starter on the far right, throttle on the right, and then your front brake up on front. And then we have your front brakes fluid. And then from the view as the rider, you can see our mirrors have a pretty good view. And then the gas tank is nice and slim. All right, guys, so we are setting off now on the R7. So certainly a peppy bike just slowly getting up to some speed now and then taking some turns. Very quiet bike, not too much sound in the stock form at least. But as far as just normal riding before we get to the twisties, this is really, really comfortable. I honestly have always been a fan of leaving the R6, but this is very comfortable. It's not too crazy hunched over. Um, really good seating position, and I like how slender the gas tank feels. It doesn't feel like a bulky bike. It feels like it's a pretty slim to ride on bike, and uh, I don't know, I find it nice and comfortable. Leg position is good. Doesn't feel like my legs are too bent or too stretched out, and my back is actually pretty straight with my arms nearly in the straight position. So I like just normal riding so far. This honestly could probably be a pretty good beginner bike because it just feels like a comfortable sport bike if an R3 might be a little bit too small for you. I'm five foot 11 riding on here, and uh, yeah, it definitely fits me very nicely. Mirrors do a good job, hand position, everything. So normal riding, definitely comfortable. And when you hit some bumps and everything, it feels like the suspension is pretty soft and forgiving. It doesn't feel like it's too crazy or anything like that. All right, let's test out some speed. I like having the gear indicator. First gear. Pretty peppy. You can feel that down low torque for sure. It has a pretty good amount of grunt. And I feel like you can wheelie it pretty easily. Let's see if we can do a little wheelie <laughs> coming up to here. I can feel ABS kicking in a little bit. I'm not used to that. Let's see a wheelie. <laughs> It does carry the weight pretty well up top. You can tell it doesn't have crazy top end. It doesn't really throw me back in my seat at all. However, it certainly does uh, pull pretty smooth. That's full throttle and fourth gear. So not too bad in the power delivery. The brakes, especially with ABS, you come to a stop really, really good. And I like how controllable it is. <laughs> the gears do feel a little bit short so you can quickly go through them but you know the transmission everything is very easy to shift and i noticed yamaha mentioned that with this bike they said the transmission was very easy and smoother to go through the gears so normal riding with some accelerations i mean it's a nice feeling bike it doesn't really feel like a track bike or anything you know you'd really want to be racing it seems like it's good around town, um, just comfortable sport bike, really, with plenty of power to get up to highway speeds. I feel like I've only hit about 70 so far, so it's certainly adequate to get up to speeds like that. And then getting back up to some speed, we got some twisties coming up. Needs an exhaust. Yeah, right up to 70. It's much different having a shorter rev though, going up to only 10,000 RPM, comparing it to previous bikes. And then moving on to handling as we take some nice sweepers. I like how Yamaha has slimmed down the bike, especially from older generations of this class. It feels like you can really just toss it around. You really have a good steering and the bike doesn't feel like it weighs a lot. I mean, going back and forth, and just maneuvering the bike, super easy and agile. I really like just how slim 
and how maneuverable it seems on some pretty good sweepers. So then let's test out more of the agility. Sharp turn into here. Wow, a lot of grunt down low and that was second gear almost at like 10 miles an hour. Easy to rev match. Really nimble handling. It just really is so tossable. And you have a lot of down low grunt. I mean, I'm barely above 4,000 coming out of these turns and it'll get me a good 20 mile an hour increase in speed. So I feel like while it does have a little bit shorter gears than what I'm used to, you can keep it in a gear a little bit better because you have low end torque. Like again, second gear, 15 miles an hour. Plenty of power to get me up and going. So I'm only in third gear and I think that's all I have to do on this road. So much torque. So I, I like that aspect for sure. It's a good city bike as well as some back mountain roads. I just feel like there's not really much race in it. There's not much of a track focused bike, but it seems like a really well-rounded sport bike for the road. And I like how they've slimmed these bikes down. Super easy, just going left and right, even hard into a turn. Definitely nice and maneuverable. But I think that is then it, testing out the all new Yamaha R7, seeing what this new sport bike has to offer. Super cool bike for sure. If you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned for plenty more content. And I am comparing this to my R6 in another video. So definitely check that video out. But that is it guys, I'll see you in the next video.